we're going to discuss the differences between mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events and how we can calculate the probabilities. Mutually exclusive events are those that cannot occur at the same time. For example, if you play a game of football, you can't win and draw the match. These events are mutually exclusive. On the other hand, non-mutually exclusive events are those that can occur separately, but also can occur together at the same time. So, for example, if you go for a walk in the woods, you might be able to see a bear, you might be able to see a deer, and you might be able to see both of them at the same time which probably works out badly for the deer. But these are non-mutually exclusive events. I've drawn them here for you as Venn diagrams, which isn't something you necessarily need to do, but you could imagine them as Venn diagrams. And then you'd see that one of them, the circles do not overlap, and the other one, the circles do. So for non-mutually exclusive events, you're always going to be able to imagine a Venn diagram which has an intersection, an overlapping area. Whereas mutually exclusive, it will never occur. To calculate the probability of mutually exclusive events then, you simply add their probabilities together. So let's consider the football example. Your football team has the probabilities of a win at 0.5, drawing at 0.3 and a loss at 0.2. What are the chances your team will win or draw? And then what about losing or drawing? The probability of a win or a draw first then. So we take the probability of winning to be 0.5 and a drawing to be 0.3. We add them together, 0.8, and we're done. And then for a loss or a draw, it's as simple as that. They're mutually exclusive. So we add the probabilities together. The probability of the loss, 0.2. The draw, 0.3. That gives us a total of 0.5. So very straightforward for mutually exclusive events. And it doesn't get much more complicated for non-mutually exclusive events, but let's do one more example before we move on to those. So what are the chances of pulling a queen or a king out of a normal deck of playing cards? So the probability of removing a king from the deck is going to be 4 out of 52, because there are 52 total cards and 4 of them are kings. And the probability of pulling out a queen is going to be the same. If we add these two together then, we're going to get 8 over 52. And that is the probability of pulling a queen or a king out of a deck of cards. This simplifies to 2 over 13, and as a decimal is approximately 0 0.15. So you have a probability of 0 0.15. You roll a dice. What is the probability that it will land on 1 or 6? So landing on 1, 1 out of six and landing on six is going to be one out of six. If we add them together, we get two over six, which gives us one third. Or as a decimal, we can say our probability is 0 0.33 reoccurring. Now let's consider non-mutually exclusive events. Let's think about pulling a heart or an ace from a deck of cards. Since a card can be both a heart and an ace, these events are non-mutually exclusive. So let's look at how we calculate that probability. Well, the probability of pulling a heart as a card out of a deck is going to be 13 over 52, because there's 13 of each set. The probability of pulling an ace is 4 over 52. However, there's also the chance that we could pull the ace of hearts. That has a probability of 1 over 52. So in non-mutually exclusive events, there is an overlap between two events. And this overlap means that there is a probability that both events occur at the same time. So when calculating the probability of either event happening, the heart or the ace in this case, we need to account for this overlap. And we do this by subtracting the probability of the overlapping event occurring from our original addition. So essentially, we do exactly what we did for mutually exclusive events, we add our two probabilities together, but then the probability of the overlap event happening, we just have to subtract that, otherwise we'd be over counting. So this then leaves us with 13 over 52 plus 4 over 52 minus 1 over 52. And that leaves us with our final probability. Let's try one more example then. In a P class of 50 students, 30 students play football, 20 play basketball, and 10 play both football and basketball. What is the probability that a randomly chosen student plays football or basketball? 
So we have an overlap, so we know that it's non-mutually exclusive. And this occurs with the students that play both of our sports. So now we need to add together our probabilities and then subtract this overlapping probability. So the probabilities that we've been given that a student plays football, 30 out of 50 students do, which is 0 0.6. Probability that they play basketball is 20 over 50, so 0 0.4. And then the probability that they play both is 10 over 50, which is 0 0.2. So 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.2, giving us a final probability of 0 0.8. So to round up, essentially calculating the probability of mutually and non-mutually exclusive events is very similar. You just have to look for overlapping events, in which case you've identified a non-mutually exclusive event, and then you have to subtract the probability of that from your original calculation.